Hello, I'm Dr. Anil Gori, and I'm a consultant in reproductive medicine, surgery, and assisted conception at Fertility Plus and at the Homerton Fertility Center. So today I'm going to talk to you about an interesting case, and which is about fluid in the endometrial cavity. And what we're going to discuss is about fluid in the endometrial cavity can present in various ways, some salvageable, some not salvageable. And sometimes you'll need to think about what do I need to see to be able to give a better outcome to the patient. Often it is simple interventions and often it is interventions that can be extensive leading to long delays in treatment. So today let's have a look and say, let's share uh, a case where I'll be able to uh, tell you about quite a unique case of treatment. So this is a case of a lady coming in for IVF and a very simple intervention helped to clear the fluid in the cavity. So a 32 year old lady on an antagonist protocol, three blastocysts were frozen and as we discussed earlier, there are various methods of preparing for a frozen embryo replacement cycle. And the one that carries the least cancellation is putting some uh, the woman on a long protocol, which is called, uh, and after that, proceeding with preparing the endometrium. And whilst it does not increase the chance of pregnancy, it lowers the cancellation rates with the ovaries not being active through the entire treatment. So we gave injection gonapeptil and a scan was done three weeks later. At the down regulation scan, what was seen was a small area of fluid collection was seen to a down regulation was completed. So wh what do we do in those cases? In those cases, we say, let's start Proganova, let's start estrogen therapy and try and see if the endometrial growth takes care of the fluid in the cavity. So by day eight, another scan was done whilst he was on Proganova and there was a significant amount of fluid in the cavity. So the decision was made to continue Proganova for another seven days. So th th this one is the first scan at down regulation. where We saw a small fluid filled area just above the endometrium though uh, the endometrium was clear. Now, when Pragana was started, that fluid filled area was significantly more. HCG was negative, but there was also a follicle growing. So what does Proganova do? And Proganova is supposed to, with its increase of estrogen, is supposed to block the production of FSH. And that is how Proganova would work. In some cases, a follicle continues to grow, which means that the initial rise of FSH has not been effectively blocked by Proganova. But in this case, she was completely downregulated. So a, an appearance probably would suggest that the pituitary is still at times responsive. So when we saw the follicle growth, we said, what do we do? Continue Proganova for another seven days. By day 15, fluid was not seen in the endometrial cavity. The endometrium was about nine millimeter plus, progesterone was commenced, a single embryo transfer was done, a positive pregnancy test and a live birth rate has been recorded. So this is exactly how the endometrium looked and the ovary appeared much smaller. So there are a few points to ponder and we'll discuss about these, is have a look at the endometrium have a look and see how much of the basal layer is intact, how much of it is trilamina. And then you'll be able to think about what interventions can you do. Always measure your uterus. And I think we have lost that skill of trying to measure the uterus because there's a relationship between the endometrium length and the uterus. Check if you missed a small uterus. There is a relationship between fundal serosal and the endometrial length, and what does it tell us? 
Are there any areas of collection in the myometrium? And how can we salvage this case? So that is a short uh, talk, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw and show you how the uh, other uh, treatment would work. So let's go back. So let's have a look at uh, uh, a few things. So what do I want to know? One is, let, let's see with my drawing. So you've got a uterus and you've got an endometrium. What is important is, what is that basal layer? So what you want is you want to know this layer, is it damaged or is it good? Next, what you want to know is, what is that distance between here and what is that length of the earth? this. Why? Think about this. You've got a large uterus and you've got a small endometrial cavity. What happens then? Then effectively what you're doing is you're probably dealing with an adenomyotic uterus or a fibroid uterus. I mean, uterus whose overall bulk has increased in, in size. In this case, if your endometrial cavity, I believe, is less than 2.5 millimeter, your in length, your chance, your centimeter, sorry, in your, the chances of a successful implantation are likely to be lower. And that's from a, a personal way. And what I tend to see is I say, well, can you effectively make this endometrium grow? And that is again, something which is very important. The second thing which you want to look at is, you've got a, a uterine structure and your endometrium is growing. Now, whether or not, and you've got some uteruses, you, you have a thin endometrium, but what you see is, is the trilaminar endometrium growing. And there's a difference. There's a difference between this and this. Why? Because even with a small dose of estrogen, there is a good proliferative growth in this endometrium. In this endometrium, it's not there. Here again, if you see a mild trilaminar appearance, and again, what it tells us is there's some form of estrogen activity, some form of proliferative growth addition or doing a mock cycle may be helpful. Finally, what you end up seeing is, are there any fluid-filled areas in the myometrium? Again, a sign of adenomyosis. And some of these fluid-filled areas will leak. Now, in the previous case, what we did we do? We said, why don't we continue to give estrogen? And what that would effectively do is that would try and clear the, cor the correction basically with the endometrium having it absorbed. Now, finally, what I want you to do is often we see uteruses that way, small, atrophic. It happens in some forms of PCOS due to high androgens. It happens in women with premature ovarian failure, in Turner syndrome. In those cases, build up the endometrial uterus. Build up the uterus with estrogen. If it happens with, with, a, uh, with PCOS, those are the difficult cases. And it may take you a reasonable number of attempts of trying to get the endometrium growth. So again, if you see fluid in the cavity, Try and challenge the endometrium first. Try and see if the fluid in the cavity can be absorbed. Now, fluid in the cavity can occur because of damaged tubes. Could occur because of infection. But first, you see it during the IVF cycle. It's never been there before. And that's a prerequisite. It's never been there before. In those cases, try and do a small intervention. So th that's in short about how the uh, short case of fluid in the cavity. I hope you enjoyed this talk and I'll be presenting a few more cases in the recent future. Thank you.